Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Diane and today we're going to paint a super easy little watercolour of a flock of loose autumn coloured butterflies. This is an easy painting which tries to capture something of the mood of the last of the summer wine. So let's jump in and get painting. So today we're going to do some butterflies and um, for, before we start I'm going to apologise because <clears throat> today's one of those days when I've got a thousand things going around in my head, most of which are irrelevant. And um, I'm really late doing this video because it um, should have been done yesterday. But yesterday I didn't feel well so I couldn't paint and uh, now today it's already lunchtime and I haven't started yet. So um, I'm not going to rush this, we're going to take it easy and do it in the normal way and uh, we'll just hope it comes out. This is my practice sketch which I've just done. I want to do some butterflies but I don't want to do real butterflies, the butterflies of the imagination, essence of butterfly. So we, in one of my other videos, which hopefully we'll remember to put a link to, um, I explained how to draw them in a way which is easy and um, hopefully that will help anyone who's stuck. Definitely helped me because when I started this channel I didn't know how to draw a butterfly really, I'd never painted them, um, or not often anyway, not in the way I do now. Um, so that's that and I'd take a look at that if I were you and also what I find helpful is to have a book with some pictures of butterflies and I'm not going to even try to get anywhere close to drawing them the way they are in real life. Um, but somehow having something in front of me helps me to um, make something up. It triggers my imagination. So this is my book, um, which one or two of you have bought copies of, and this is a very ramshackle old copy, this one. Book of the British Countryside, published in 1973, and it's got every single aspect of nature from deer to castles to ferns and, oh, more butterflies, there we are. But these ones um, I wanted to look at because they are sort of brownish. And so I wanted to do some autumn colored butterflies. So we put that book over there and I'll try to refer to that. Now, <clears throat> I've got a sheet here of arches, a hun arch, 140 pound watercolor paper. Thank you very much to my friend in America who sent it to me um, to try out, and I am trying it out. This is the third sheet I've used so far. This time I've soaked it and taped it, stretched it on a board, and um, we're gonna see how that works. So hopefully you'll get some information out of this. And so let's get started. I have got here some watercolor pencils. These are Albrecht Dürer uh, watercolour pencils from Paper Castell. I've got three colours here, three neutral colours, I suppose, sepia, sanguine and um, burnt carmine. So a sort of reddish brown, a kind of cinnamon colour and uh, sepia, which is almost black. And I'm going to use those to draw the outlines of the butterflies. Then I'm going to wet within the outline. Then I'm going to use some watercolour paint. And here I have got um, transparent orange from, I think that's from Old Holland. I've got sepia, I've got burnt sienna, and I've got quinacridone gold. Um, I, I've got a few other colors over here which I might pull in depending. This is Windsor violet, might use some of that. I've got also olive green, which you'll recognize as being a favorite, and even more of a favorite of mine, Potter's pink. So this will all depend on how I feel once I get started, whether or not I use any of those. Um, I need to sharpen my pencils because they are as blunt as a bone, as my son always used to say. Um, and uh, here are my brushes at the moment. I've got to hand a number nine and a number seven round. Um, I may use something else. If I do, I'll put it either in the description or else if you go to our website at dianantoncom you will find a blog there which um, is about all the materials, every painting that I do, I do a blog about it and I include links to all the different materials that we use. So I'm just going to turn you off for a minute while I sharpen my pencils. Okay, so here I have my um, butterflies drawn out in the different colours that I showed you a minute ago. I sharpened my pencils and I've drawn them. <coughs> and um, I'm just starting now to wet the um, paper where I have the um, the shape of the butterfly drawn in 
And uh, I'm sorry I'm starting from this point, but I forgot to turn the video on. So I was talking to myself for the last 10 minutes. And um, never mind, I probably got some things out of my system that uh, were better out than in. So we'll start again. Um, okay, so let's see how this paper goes. This is Arches watercolour paper stretched on a board. And um, this is a similar painting to one I did a few months ago, which you might want to take a look at. And I did that one on a paper which was most definitely not Arches. I don't know what it was. It was something quite unabsorbent. And um, <clears throat> I did have a bit of a problem with the paint sitting on the surface and not bleeding. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm just dropping in some paint here at the points of the butterfly's wings and um, dropping it in, literally just dabbing it onto the paper. And if you come to the edge, the very edge there where it's not wet, you'll get a nice kind of frilly edge if you do this. And then at the bottom here, I'm using orange rather than burnt sienna. And then the, um, the body, we could put a little bit of brown down there as a kind of, I don't know, contrast. And we could pick up a bit more sepia. Put some spots, perhaps. Yes, I was talking about um, butterflies and how um, there are many butterflies, but there are more moths. And um, I used to have a friend who, when I lived in England, who had a husband who used to um, trap, photograph and release moths. And um, it was amazing. He taught me lots of things about them. And I found out that there are far, far, far more moths than there are um, butterflies and the thing is they're very beautiful but you never see them because they're night flyers and they come out at night in all their glory and um, if you've got a trap you can trap them and see them and photograph them and you'll be amazed um, and then you let them go but you wouldn't see them otherwise Butterflies, of course, we do see, and we're more familiar with them. And people tend to think of moths as being the things that eat your woolies. <clears throat> so what am I going to do here? I think I might put a bit more orange on this one. This is permanent, uh, permanent vermilion, this colour. It is bleeding really nicely. The paper is allowing the colour to really bleed nicely. So I'm just wetting the, out, the inside of the butterfly, allowing the pencil to run. <coughs> and then this one has come out sort of pinkish colour. So it's crying out for Potter's Pink. And then I just drop the colour in, literally dabbing it onto the paper.
And we'll let that dry. We'll let all of them dry for the first coat and see what happens. This one is sideways on. This one I've done in sepia again. Maybe this one wants to be in the violet. And um, this one's, I did this one in Burnt Carmen again. But I'm going to come in there with Burnt Sienna. Maybe a bit of sepia. I thought it would be nice to do, I'm going to do this one greenish. I thought it, Tamsin suggested this and I thought it would be nice to, to do too. Um, a sort of homage to the end of summer, beginning of the winter, to do some butterflies because they are still around. Uh, we just found a whole bunch of them starting to hibernate inside our parasols that we just put away end of the summer. We put them all away into the shed till next year. And you find ladybirds and flies and butterflies and goodness knows what inside. And I think it's a good idea when you're doing these fantasy butterflies to paint the bodies more or less in the same color or a darker shade of the same color as the wings because they're fantasy butterflies. So we'll just put the body in that one. And then this one. Needs a bit more colour too. <clears throat> and then, uh, so we're getting down here to this one. If you try to paint a butterfly accurately and you feel that you haven't achieved what you wanted, I, I can't, I struggle. My daughter can, she can do realistic butterflies and that's amazing what she does and she paints really well with pencils. She uses pencils and I think what she does is beautiful. Um, I, on the other hand, am not that way inclined. I'm not very good at doing things exactly the way they appear in a photograph. And um, why am I saying this? I've lost track. Um, Oh yeah, no, I was going to say, if you if you try to do it realistically and you're not pleased with the result, um, don't worry because it doesn't matter. Yeah, that was stunning, wasn't it? Homespun philosophy. So anyway, better thing to do is to say, I don't like to paint realistic. I'm, I paint interpretive, I paint. Ha 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 ha. Sorry, I paint abstract, <laughs> which means that my thing doesn't look like the real thing. Thank you, Picasso. I was reading a book the other day, trying to find out what the definition of abstract is. And believe me, it's not the same as loose. No, it's not. <laughs> Abstraction is when you take something to the absolute limit of minimal so it basically no longer looks like what it's what it started off as or what your idea was. So, you know, you would think butterfly and then you would paint something that looked more like a lump of stone or a but not but doesn't actually look like anything. It's supposed to look like, you know, airy flight or something. 
abstraction is not loose painting. What I do is playing with paint and seeing what happens. Okay, I'm going to put a... What colour did I do that? I can't remember now what I put in that one. Um, 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 um. Um, um, it was permanent vermilion, wasn't it? From Old Holland. Okie dokie, so now we're going to uh, grab a pen and I'm going to put in the antennae. We won't bother with legs, except on these ones which are from the side. out the pencil after. I will do more on the butterflies but they do need to dry first but before we do that I'm going to um, I'm going to do some kind of background and I'm just wondering what size brush to use I think I might use shall I use that one yeah okay this is a size 10 and um, I'm good. This is testing, 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 uh, testing the um, paper. So I've got a uh, cobalt blue here, and I'm going to try, 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 try to do a loose background. And we'll see what happens with this paper. I haven't wetted it, it's dry. And I'm hoping it's going to blend reasonably well. And then in a minute, once I've done this, I'll do some uh, spatter or something, depending on what it looks like. So, um, cobalt blue and burnt sienna together makes a nice dark bluish grey. Bluish if you um, put enough blue in it. So, Thank you. 
So to give a little bit of um, depth to this not abstract painting, we'll give some variety to the background. And then um, I'm going to do a bit of spatter. Spatter. So I'll get my rigor. Rigor. Has anyone watched the uh, Hebridean Baker <laughs> on TikTok? You should, if you haven't, you, you have a laugh. I quite like TikTok. I watch TikTok just before I go to bed, just before I go to sleep. Yes. And I also, I like um, Dylan Hollis in Bermuda and his cookery is hilarious. He does all these recipes from the, um, from actually from some, some of them are a hundred years old. He does these recipes um, for things like um, ration cake which turns out like a brick and a deep fried cookie dough and all sorts of things like that. And then he tastes them. He's really, he's so funny. Dylan Hollis, B. Dylan Hollis. And we'll see how that bleeds in because that's going to obviously spread and dry and do all sorts of things. Um, and we'll see what that does later. These are all still damp and uh, unfortunately I have to stop at this point and let it dry. So I will do that and I'll see you shortly. Now I'm going to try out a technique here. Now this is dry um, because I want this to be loose and somewhat random. And, but I don't want it to lose its lightness. And this is always a problem. It's always difficult because the more you go random, chances are the more you're going to um, go heavy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try this and see if it works. I've wet that butterfly and I'm going to try to literally spatter into it. I probably ought to take a piece of cloth or tissue and protect the outside, the, the background a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. So I'm dropping yellow in on that side and then without cleaning my brush, this is a rigger I've got here. Uh, I've got number, is it two? Yeah, number two, Sienna Art Rigger. And then I'm gonna put a couple of burnt sienna spots in. And I'm hoping that that's going to give a sort of, a uh, little bit more of a three-dimensional look, as will this when I come in with a little bit more shadow underneath. Just a little bit underneath the butterfly, there. So that's, um, this is one way of achieving more of a textured effect while retaining the lightness. So I'm going to go into this pink one now with uh, with my rigger and Potter's pink and I've wet the... And it doesn't matter if some of the splashes go over the background because quite often we put them there on purpose, don't we? So there's a few on that one. Always remembering less is more. Um, I'm not going to put anything on that side of that one. Maybe I'll come in with a little bit of 
sepia there. This paper does, um, what's the word, um, allow the most amazing bleeds and very, very subtle blending at the end when it's finished doing what it wants to do. And you can, as well as doing your spatter like this, you can, of course, just touch. See what happens when that dries. And then we've got one more down here. Maybe we'll do some gold on that one. And we've got this violet one. Let's pick up some bins of violet. Green one. And that one, uh, I think burnt sienna again for that one, perhaps, but. And then maybe put some more burnt sienna in this one. Maybe even a little bit of sepia. some of those spots to give a little bit more blend, can do, don't have to. And then what next? Maybe I might come back in. Uh, if you wanted to make this darker, you certainly could by using um, your watercolour pencil. So I'm just going to emphasise the bodies a little bit. So I'm just coming in with sepia and just doing a little bit of a line along the body there, keeping it a little bit irregular. And um, this one here, I think we just need a little bit, perhaps, a little bit more pink around the edges. You could carry on like this forever. And I was just thinking about um, Denise, who uh, sent me this paper. 
for which I thank you deeply because I'd been hesitating over buying any more of this for ages because I, uh, whoops, that's not one blue, um, uh, for various reasons which I won't bore you with, but this has forced me to actually think about the paper that we use and the difference that it makes. And I think that practicing with this and trying to find out how you uh, enjoy using it is really very worthwhile. It's definitely good paper. Um, now, I need to put in a few veins in some of these. I'm just using an ordinary pencil here for the veins because if I used a watercolour pencil, it would run because these are still wet. These, these petals, they're like leaves, aren't they? Someone asked me what my favourite thing to paint was if I wasn't that fond of flowers. I didn't really mean I didn't like painting flowers. I've just never really been a flower painting person and I was a long time into my art, uh, what's the word, career? before I really kind of bothered with them. Um, I do like painting flowers, but I'm always surprised by what happens. Um, but if I had to, and I said, I don't know, I don't think I have anything in favorite, but I think if I do have anything favorite, it's got to be butterflies because they're so, um, uh, easy going. As long as you don't try to make them look like anything specific. So there we are. That's the final painting. Hope you enjoyed watching me do that and uh, forgive me for the little bit that's missing. Um, if you did enjoy that, if you wouldn't mind giving us a like and subscribing, that would be wonderful. And um, also to turn on notifications so that you hear whenever a new video comes up straight away. Um, also, you might want to consider joining the channel and becoming a member of our family. Just uh, go to the channel homepage and you'll see a button there to press which says join. Click on that. It doesn't join you automatically. It sends you to a page where you can find out what joining means. So that would be lovely if you'd like to join with us. Um, also, don't forget our website, dianeanton.com, where you can download sketches of all the paintings that we've done that needed a sketch over the last year or so since we've been doing this. And they're all free of charge all there for you to just help yourself to no problem. You just have to put them in your basket, check out as usual, but we don't ask for any payment. Just go right ahead and take whatever you want, but you do have to go through that process. That's the way it works. So that's it for now, everybody. I hope you did enjoy that and I will see you again soon. So I'll say bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>